After Wall Street's muddled performance on Friday and U.S. markets closed today for a holiday, traders turned their attention to grim economic news in the region. While investors are comforted by a slowdown in new infections outside, uh, outside the hardest hit Hubei province in recent days, they might be less sanguine if China's economy takes a worse than expected hit. And uh, Stephen Ines, says Stephen Ines of AxiCorp. Now, what is it that we can learn, that's Nigeria, from what's happened in Japan with regards to their reaction to their consumption tax? Now, what we're seeing here is the Japanese data that we just talked about a few minutes ago. This is key. The yellow line here, 1.6% on the yellow line, that's their GDP growth for the fourth quarter. It contracted by 1.6%. If you look at the red line, and annualized, it contracted by 6.3%. The key here is what can Nigeria learn from this figure? Let's move on to our, our next slide now and see what we have here. This is Japan's quarterly GDP growth going back from uh, 2014, comparing it to 2019. Before, at the last, the last uh, chart you're seeing there, 6.3% is the annualized contraction that we just talked about for Q4. The last time we saw this um, annualized contraction was 7.1% in the second quarter of 2014, when Japan last hit their people with their high consumption tax. Let's move to uh, the next one. OK, now. Take a, look at, take a look at what we're seeing here with Japan's graduated increase in consumption taxes. This is a key lesson for Nigeria to learn. 1989, 3% consumption tax. 1997, 5%. 2014, 8%. 2019, 10%. Over the last 30 years, Japan has gradually increased their consumption tax. This is a lesson for Nigeria. Nigeria, the last time Nigeria tried to actually raise consumption tax, which is VAT, value added tax, that was in 2007. What happened? The labor union said, no, you shall not raise this tax. You shall not pass. It's like the Lord of the Rings character. So if we take a lesson from here, they've gradually raised taxes. However, the last chart that we just looked at, the last big drop that they saw in 2014 was when they were hit with that 8% tax. And now they've seen the same thing in 2019. Let's now move on to our next slide here. Lessons, lessons, lessons. This is Nigeria. We come to Nigeria now. Information and communication sector. We're looking at Nigeria's GDP third quarter performance. 2019, 9.8% growth. Key, key. This is key. Our GDP for the information communication sector, which is made up of telecoms, publishing, motion picture, and sound. We don't worry about that. What we care about is telecoms. Let's move on to our next slide here now. OK, ICT GDP quarterly growth. Q1, 1.5%. Look at this. This is the cash cow of Nigeria's, one of Nigeria's GDP's best performances. Um, Q2, 11.8%. Q3, 12.09. Uh, Q4, 13.2. Look at that. And this is for 2018. Q1, look at those figures. This is growth. This is key for Nigeria. You have to keep this in mind. Now, let's move to our next slide here. Telecoms, one of the central subsets of the ICT sector. Look at the growth in the telecom sector for Nigeria. Q1, yeah, 1.8, and then it rockets up and just takes off. Q2, 11.54. Q3, 14.9. Q4, 16.6. .6. That's 2018. And then 2019, 12.18, 11.3, 12.1. The telecom sector of GDP for Nigeria averaged 12.3% growth. So now this is the key thing here. Let's move to, uh, I think we have some, uh, yes, now Nigeria as a whole, GDP for Nigeria, the average growth that we've seen in Nigeria, Q1 2018 through to Q3 2019, look at our average growth, 1.8%, 1.5. This is after we've come out of the recession in 2016, tepid growth in 2017, and then we're treading water in 2018, 1.8. And then we started to see a little bit of improvement. 2.3% in Q4 2018, and then 2.1, 2.12, and 2.28 in Q3. So we've averaged 2% growth through 2019. Next week, we're expecting our Q4 GDP figures. Here is the rub of the green. Do we have those tweets? Do we have those tweets from those individuals that were complaining about? Uh, yes, we do. This is from, uh, this is from uh, Darmi. She says, telecommunications company now charge VAT on calls and SMS. Omo, I'm tired of this country. Cry, cry, cry emoji. Where's the second one? Yes, Mr. T, am I the only one who doesn't fully understand the VAT on calls and SMS yet? Someone school me, please. And he tags uh, a number of the telecoms companies. All right, so let's get back to our GDP growth now. This is the key thing. If Nigerians should pull back on their use of calls and SMSs and data like the Japanese have done because of the increase in VAT, 
you are likely to see a slowdown in this, in fact, a contraction in these numbers. We talked about it early on this morning on the morning show. And if we were to see the same type of contraction, now, it may not be the same thing, but it will probably be a slowdown. If we're to see it, here's what happens. You and I, we all have SMS, we all have phones. If we stop making those calls, if we reduce our SMSs, if we reduce data use, we are going to affect the revenue of the telecoms companies that make up the telecommunications sector that is part of the ICT sector. If, reven if you, call, you drop your calls, revenue drops to the telecoms companies, that means that the ICT sector records a slowdown. That means GDP growth also would actually be affected by that and also record a slowdown as well. So it is very important. Now, however, here's the thing. This is key now. The, if you look at the Q4 period for 2018, this is the last three months of the year, October, November, December. That was the festive period, get it December, party after party. Everybody's texting people that they know, reaching out to family members, making calls. This period is, was a festive period, and so we're likely to see a lot of, a lot of, we saw a lot of growth here. However, the VAT was not introduced until February of this year. It was part, of course, of the 2019 finance bill. The finance bill is what introduced the increase in VAT from 5.5% to 5% to 7.5%. So if what I just laid out a few minutes ago, you and I and other people that were on Twitter complaining about the VAT on SMSs, if we're to cut back, when would we see that impact? We probably would not see that impact until the second quarter or the third quarter of this particular year. Why? Because we're right in the middle of the first quarter as we speak. And so we're still expecting Q4 data probably won't be affected. It's going to be in the second or third quarter. So again, not trying to be a doomsday specialist here, but if collectively Nigerians decide to pull back on their telecommunications activity, we might see what we've seen in Japan. Now, another thing to note that's very important about the finance bill. How much of an impact is it going to have on the revenues for the federal government? How much are they still hoping to raise from here? Even though Nigeria has increased VAT to 7.5%, it is still one of the lowest um, figures across Africa. Your Ghanas, your Cameroons, your South Africans, they're all in double digits. Nigeria is still in single digits. Now, the thing is, though, that increase in 7.5%, how much are they looking to get? Last year, VAT, Nigeria collected about 1.1 trillion naira in VAT in 2019. Now, assuming that we collect, it's, it's assumed that we collect, say, another 500, 550 billion. The federal government doesn't keep all of that revenue for itself. Bulk of that revenue goes to the, to, to the states. Another portion of it goes to um, the local government. So you're looking at about 85% between the states and the local government. Federal government keeps only about 15%. The states... Their total, um, total debt, as far as total liabilities, I, or debt totaled about 9 trillion naira last year. How much, the, how much did revenue did the states get in 2019? They got about 1.1 trillion in uh, internally generated revenue, IGR. They got another 2.5 trillion from the federation account distributed amongst them. So you're looking at revenue of about 3.5 trillion for 36 states who have a collective bill of about 9 trillion. How much more are they going to get from the, from the increase in VAT of 7.5%? It doesn't look like it's going to be a lot. So as far as the federal government is concerned, this probably would have had to have been a higher increase. However, we talked about this earlier on this morning on the Global Business Report with our guest from Cardinal Stone. The, Niger the average Nigerian has gotten a lot of punches in the face, increase in inflation, increase in VAT, probably a possible increase in electricity tariffs. Where is the room to increase the type of to increase the VAT on the average Nigerian for the federal government to get the kind of growth that it needs as far as revenue is concerned, it's probably not there. So our dear government is possibly in between a rock and a hard place as far as raising revenue now from Nigerians. So where else? Where do you go? What else do you do if you want to continue to see this type of growth for the country? You have to look outside of oil. You have to look outside of oil. You have to look at privatizing telecoms, right, imitating the type of growth that we saw in telecoms in other sectors. President Obasanjo, back in 2000, when he liberated the telecom sector and handed out licenses to the very first uh, telecoms companies, they provided all types of jobs. Think about this. Think about all the call centers that you see across the country when you call in and have an issue with your phone. 
Think about every other place that has seen growth from the telecom sector due to, to, due to the liberalization of their sector. That is what Nigeria has to do in order to see this type of growth continue. If not, we might see a repeat in what's going on with uh, Japan, but hopefully not. We'll have to keep our eyes on that. Keep Stay tuned to the Global Business Report on the Rise News.